Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to cover chapter 10th that is batch processing from the book Designing Data Intensive Applications. So let's begin. In the previous section of the book, we have generally dealt with the data systems where we are uh, firing a request or we are firing a query. So in those cases, either there exists a client, that client can be a service, maybe requesting uh, another service using a REST API or that client can be a user who is actually using a web browser. So in these kind of systems, we generally wait for a response and the response time of the systems becomes an important thing. But we have another kind of systems as well like batch processing and stream processing where the response time is not that important because they are kind of offline systems or near real time systems and the client do not wait for the response immediately. So what is a batch processing system? A batch processing system is mainly it takes a large amount of input data and it runs a job and gives us some output. Generally the batch jobs are scheduled to run periodically and the primary performance measure of the batch job is usually the throughput that how much time it takes to process an input data and produce some output. Whereas a stream processing system is between an online system and an offline system where it consumes some input and produces some output. So the difference between an offline system and a stream processing system is that in a batch processing we have an fixed input of data whereas in stream processing the data is kind of a stream which is coming on and is getting processed by those systems and then some output is produced. So in this chapter we are mainly going to deal with batch processing systems and we are going to see how these are an important factor for building reliable, maintainable and scalable systems. So we are just going to start with the very basic examples of batch processing in Unix tools. So let's consider an example that you have a web service deployed on a web server and these are the access logs of an nginx which is a reverse proxy. So access logs has all the information of when the request was received, who was the client, what was the URL, what was the response time and so on. So if you see this particular format, this is an nginx log access log format and there are a couple of information on this particular log. To understand this log, we have to understand the definition of this log format. So let's assume we want to calculate how many request URLs were hit and uh, what were the frequency. So HTTP refer is present at the seventh location and that's why we are using awk command and printing the dollar seven, basically the seventh location where the URL is stored. Then we are sorting it and then we are finding the number of unique elements and then we are again sorting it and then printing the top five elements. This way it will give us the result of what are the top five URLs which have been hit to our web server. So there are multiple log tools available in the market to process and analyze logs like Splunk, Logstash, ELK but this is how a Unix command can read this logs and produce reports and some outputs for us. So you just saw that how we used a couple of commands and chained them to form the required output. So this is what the Unix philosophy says that you should be able to connect any programs or multiple programs like garden hose and make the output of one program as the input of another program. So if we see what are the other philosophies, it says that we should have each program do one thing well and if we want to do a new job, we should start from fresh rather than adding the new features in the same old program. So every program should have a separate responsibility and we should expect that output of one program can become the input of another program and for this if we are expecting that okay the output of one program can become the input of another program so they must have a common interface because that's how you would interact between the programs and the common interface in Unix is a file which is an ordered sequence of bytes. Another feature of Unix tool is the separation of the program logic and how the input and output is wired. So if you have not specified uh, from where your program will read the input, so standard input comes from the keyboard and your standard output goes to the screen. So you can take input from files, you can dump your output to the files. So you can use pipe operators and attach the standard output of one process to the standard input of another process. In this way, 
your program becomes independent of and it doesn't know that okay where my input is coming from and where my output is going to so this is kind of a loose coupling or the inversion of control where we are separating the logic of input output wiring and the program logic and it helps us to basically compose small tools to form a larger bigger system another feature of unix is transparency and experimentation so the input files to unix command are generally treated as immutable which means that they do not change irrespective of how many time you run the commands you can run various command line options without damaging the input files you can end the pipeline at any point of time you can write the output of one pipeline stage to a file and you can use that file as an input to the next stage this will help you to restart the second stage without rerunning the previous pipelines so unix tools are quite helpful and useful and they are very good for experimentation but the limitation with unix tool is that they only run on single machine and that's where tools like hadoop comes in so now let's look what is mapreduce and distributed file systems so mapreduce is also similar to unix tools but the difference is that it is distributed across multiple machines if you compare a single mapreduce job to a single unix tool they are kind of similar that even mapreduce job takes one or more input and produces one or more outputs so it it also doesn't modify the input similar to what unix does and it also produces an output whereas in unix tools we do have standard input of the keyboard and standard output to the screen but mapreduce jobs read and write files on a distributed file systems so if you look at the hadoop's implementation of the mapreduce that file system is called hdfs which is hadoop distributed file system and this system is based on shared nothing principle in shared nothing systems machines or nodes do not share memory or storage and they are just connected via a network the principles which apply to hdfs for a distributed file system also applies to other systems like amazon s3 azure blob storage so hdfs consists of a daemon process which runs on each machine and it exposes a network service so that it allows other nodes to access the files stored on that particular machine and a central server called name node keeps track of which file blocks are present on which machine so hdfs creates one big file system that can use the space on the disk of all the machines running the daemon so if you have to tolerate any disk failures any machine failures the file blocks are replicated on multiple machines to provide redundancy and high availability now let's look at how a mapreduce job is executed mapreduce is a programming framework with which we can write code to process large data sets in a distributed file system and the easiest way to understand is by looking at our previous example of access logs where we were trying to calculate the top 5 urls hit to our server so the mapreduce job also works in similar to what we were using the unix command mapreduce is also reduce uh, also reads a set of input files and breaks that file into multiple records in our example of log each record would be a different log line separated by an record separator so mapper reads each input record and it extract a key value pair in our example the key would be url and the value would be empty then we sort all the key value pairs because it becomes easy to combine those values then we apply a reducer function which collects all the values corresponding to a key and it iterate over the collection of values so in order to create a map reduce job you need two callback functions which is a mapper and a reducer and the main difference between a mapper map reduce and unix command is that you can parallelize a map reduce job and you can parallelize a computation across many machines without having explicitly handling the parallelism the range of problems we can solve with a single map reduce job is limited if you look at the same example of log analysis the first map reduce job can only determine the number of page views per url but it cannot determine the most popular popular urls because that requires a second round of sorting so it is very common for a map reduce job to be chained together into workflows so that the output of one job becomes the input to the next job the hadoop map reduce framework doesn't have any particular support for these workflows uh, 
so the chaining is done implicitly by the directory name that is the first job must be configured to write its output to a designated directory in hdfs and the second job must be configured to read the same directory name as its input so the chained map reduce jobs are not similar to unix commands pipeline because in unix commands the output of one process can become as an input to another process directly using a in memory buffers but in map reduce jobs it is more like a sequence of commands where each command's output is written to a temporary file and then the next command reads that input from a temporary file we talked about how we can use unix commands and map reduce job to read some inputs and produce some outputs but where are those outputs used so if we look at from the database perspective and if we see transaction processing systems which is oltp we generally look up for a small number of records and we look up by a key and there can be some indexes present in the system and if we look at olap system which is analytic query system we might be scanning over a large set of inputs and we can use groupings and aggregations to form some output in the form of reports or graphs the end consumer of these reports or graphs can be analyst or managers to make some business decision so where does the batch processing fits is it similar to transaction processing or is or is it similar to analytic processing so the batch processing is similar to analytic processing because batch processing also scans over a large set of input data set and produces some output but it is not necessary that the output would always be a report it can be another structures as well so another example of map reduce job is google used map reduce jobs to build indexes for search engine another uses can be in a machine learning systems to form classifiers and even recommendation systems now let's look at the philosophy of batch process and how it is different from unix so we just saw that in unix the output of one program can become the input to another program and there is a common interface which is called file in unix and in unix the input is immutable which means you can run the commands as many times as you want so similar to unix map reduce job also follows the same philosophy that they are immutable the inputs are immutable and you can run as many times as you want and batch jobs are also performant and it is easier to maintain so if we introduce a bug into our system and the output gets corrupted we can simply roll back to the previous version of the code and rerun the job and output will be reproduced because of the consequence of this ease of roll back the feature development is quick in map reduce also there are automatic retries in map reduce framework which means that if if a map or reduce task fails the map reduce framework would automatically reschedule that job and run the job on the same input again also in map reduce the same side of set of files can be used as an input for multiple jobs to produce multiple outputs similar to unix systems map reduce jobs also separates the program logic and the input output wiring that is it provides a separation of concern and provides a possibility of reuse of code now let's look the difference between a map reduce and distributed databases so if we compare them we can see three main differences one is diversity of storage so databases require generally us to structure our data according to a particular model be it a relational database or a document database whereas files in a distributed file systems are just byte sequences which can be written using any data model or any encoding they can be collection of database records they can be text images videos sensor readings any kind of data so we say that hdfs or hadoop opened up the possibility of just dumping the data and then later figuring out how we can process that data now let's look at the second difference that how a distributed database and a map reduce handles the fault and how they use the memory and disk so batch processes are generally less sensitive to faults than the online systems because they do not immediately affect the users even if they fail and they can always run again so if a node crashes while a query is executing most database would abort the entire query and either the user have to resubmit the query 
or we would have to think of some retry mechanism. But in case of MapReduce, the cost of retrying is not that high and MapReduce can tolerate the failure of a map or reduce task and it can always retry and reschedule the job later. Now let's look at the third difference which is diversity of processing the models. Databases are monolithic and they are tightly integrated pieces of software that takes care of couple of things like storage layout on disk, query planning, scheduling, execution, etc. These components have to be tuned and optimized for the specific need of the database and the system can as a whole achieve very good performance on the type of query for which it is designed. Whereas MapReduce gives the ability to easily run our own code over large data sets. So if we have HDFS and MapReduce, we can build a SQL query execution engine on top of it and that's what the Hive project does. So people found out that MapReduce was limiting and it performed badly for some kind of processing. So other processing models can be built over the top of Hadoop. So now let's summarize what we have studied in this chapter. We have looked at how batch processing is important factor for building reliable, scalable and maintainable systems. We started with the example of batch processing in Unix tools. We moved to the Unix philosophy. We saw that how a MapReduce job is different from a Unix. And we also saw that how the batch workflows, philosophy and those files are different from Unix. So I hope you have understood that how batch processing is useful and you have learned something from this video. Please add any inputs or suggestions you have in the comment section. Also do let me know that how you have used batch processing in building some kind of systems. Thank you.